The psychology of making your ex chase sometimes seems counterintuitive, but I'm going to give you five steps to make your ex chase and two of them near the end are when your ex is actually already moving towards you and reaching out to you. We're going to talk about those as well because it's really important. A lot of people think they've gotten their ex back because their ex has reached out and then things fade away. So we're going to talk about that. So be sure to stick around for those final points. The first step to making your ex chase is to stay away. It's the no contact rule that I talk about a lot and it's powerful. Don't overlook it. You need to hear it again and be encouraged to do it and to stick with it because staying away from them, it does so many things that a lot of times people are not even aware of. People tell me it feels like I'm doing nothing. I can't just sit here and do nothing. I've got to reach out to him. I've got to tell her that I love her, things like that when those are actually the worst things that you could do. And the reason is not because you're trying to be mean or because you're trying to be immature about it or play some mind game. When someone tells you that they want you out of their life and that they don't want to be with you anymore, they want to break up, the mature response is to give them that. You don't force yourself. You don't try to make the other person hear you out over and over again. You give them what they think that they want. You bow out gracefully. You keep your dignity. And then it gets really strategic. Because if you're chasing your ex, there's no room for them to chase you. Think about that. A lot of people think that when the other person is broken up with them, that all of a sudden the ball is in their court to go fix things, when actually it's not. Your ex broke it. You don't fix their mess. If anything, it just shows them that they don't have to worry. That if later they think the breakup was a mistake, well, they can just reach out to you and get you back. It's no problem. And whereas that may feel like the safe thing to do, it's actually the worst thing you could do simply because they will fade in terms of how they feel about you, even at that point, because you are so easily gotten back. There's no danger of losing you and they are in full control. And so over time, especially your ex will see you as less valuable because you're just constantly an option and that's just not attractive. It may sound romantic. And I know a lot of you tell me, and I see it in the comments and people who book coaching calls with coach Ken will tell him that they tell their ex, I'll always be here. You can always come back, things like that. And whereas you may feel that way, that's not something you should tell your ex. If you already have, it's not the end of the line. All hope is not lost, but don't do that again. And your actions should show that you can move on and that you are not just a constant option for your ex. No contact also helps to create the second step of getting your ex to chase. And that is mystery. And a lot of people will think that they should try to put pictures up of them with somebody else, that they should keep the lines of communication open with their ex, let them know how they're doing and that kind of thing. But mystery where your ex just doesn't know. They don't know if you're with somebody else. It's actually more powerful. If your ex has an answer, for example, if they think you are dating someone else. Now, first of all, if you want your ex back and you're dating someone else, it's a really difficult situation to be in, especially because you are actually using this other person that you're dating to try to get your ex back, which is not something you want to do. You're better than that. And it can turn your ex away. People are often surprised that their ex never reaches out at all when they start posting pictures of them with romantic partners or looks like they're on a date. A lot of times an ex will think, well, I blew it. They're with somebody else. So I don't want to be rejected. I don't want to be a jerk. I don't want to be out of line and like try to interfere with this relationship. So I'll just try to move on, which is the exact opposite of what you're hoping will happen. Jealousy can blow up in your face simply because sometimes people just feel hopeless. And what most people don't know is that mystery is more powerful anyway. When your ex doesn't know what's going on with you, when they get nothing, there's no social media posts and that would be radio silence, which you can do that or you can just post really rarely and it will achieve that element of mystery because your ex just doesn't know what's going on with you and they have to kind of create it. And even if they don't want to be with you and they're in that honeymoon stage of the breakup that will fade and they will start to wonder about you. They will go into a curiosity stage and I have a video about the stages your ex goes through during no contact and I'll link to that at the end of this video. But if your ex does not know what's going on with you, they will become a little bit preoccupied with it many times where they're trying to figure it out 
and they stay up at night thinking about it because they're just not getting any information. And if you two had a good thing at one point where your ex can look back on that and remember some of those good times and now they have nothing, there's an interesting thing that goes on when you have intimacy with someone and then you have no information because intimacy is knowing the facts, the feelings of someone's life. How was your day? How did you feel when this happened? And you get to be involved in the details of this person's life and having that taken away, even if it's by your own hand, can be really difficult. And so when your ex has no information about you, that's another element to the mystery is that it makes them miss the intimacy. And I'm talking about emotional intimacy. And it's this mysterious element that brings on a lot of that curiosity that really ignites your ex chasing. And that's when a lot of times people will have an ex reach out is when they have been able to stay away and not get any information out there. And by out there, I go to the next step, which is you don't talk to anybody about it. That means mutual friends or even friends that you just know have some kind of contact with them. If you have a friend and you are absolutely certain that there is no contact between your friend and your ex because they're not friends and they don't know each other, that's when you can talk to somebody about it. But it is a very bad idea to talk to anybody who is mutual friends or even is just an acquaintance with your ex because they will oftentimes take it into their own hands thinking they can help you out and they'll go to your ex and your friend who you're talking to about this will overestimate their ability to help you. They think if they can go to your ex and go, Oh, she's just hurting so bad. She cried missing you when I talked to her. Oh, he's just really struggling. Can't sleep. He doesn't eat. I'm just so worried about him because he misses you so much. See, they think ignorantly that that will make your ex want to come back to you. It might make your ex feel sorry for you, but feeling sorry for someone, feeling pity for someone is not the same thing as being attracted to them. Think about someone who you feel sorry for. It's not the same thing as attraction. That doesn't mean that you can't feel sorry for someone who you are attracted to if something bad happens to them, but it's not the chief element of attraction. It's not even on the list. It's a separate emotion. So don't go talking to your friends. They will usually ruin it for you if they go talk to your ex. Don't talk to people about it except someone who does not know your ex or a professional like a coach. If you aren't talking about it at all, that keeps the mystery alive and your ex starts wondering if it's bothering you. What's going on? There's more questions that your ex has to ask. And whenever someone asks a question, they want to find the answer. And that's an attractive thing where you are the answer, where there's a light at the end of the tunnel of that mystery. And it's not what you want to be the ultimate, the absolute thing that attracts your ex to you, but it does start the process. And we're trying to get several things going to start the process to where we can have some of those more fundamental elements of attraction working in your favor. And if you do approach some of her friends. They come up to you and start asking you how things are going. Don't go overboard either way. So in other words, don't talk about the breakup, number one. But if they ask, don't say, oh, I'm doing better than I've ever done in my life. Things are just amazing. Because that's not going to be believable. And if they do go back to your ex, it's going to sound like you said that so that your ex would hear it. And that's just going to sound like you're trying to get them back and you're being fake, which is very unattractive. So the best thing to do is just to say, well, you know, it's a breakup. It's not always easy, but I'm doing good. Just like that. Just simple. It's real. It's human. It's genuine, but it's also a statement of strength and it gives your ex nothing. There's still that mystery because they really don't know much of anything except that you're doing good. So the next two things I'm going to talk about are when your ex is actually moving towards you and seeming like they want to get back together because it's very important that you don't undo all the work that you've done because things will fade away. Your ex will just pull back again, and I don't want that for you. But before I get to those things, check out my emergency breakup kit. I link to it in the description below. It's the culmination of my two decades in the relationship coaching service, and it's a powerful guide to help you get your ex back. Number four, don't show anger. So your ex has reached out to you, and that's an exciting thing, especially if you've been waiting on it and you're even beginning to wonder if it's going to happen at all. And then they reach out, they send that text, they send that email, they make that call. And now what do you do? Because you can't do no contact anymore. As at least you can't just not talk to them. I'm not saying you initiate right off. You try to let them lead like a 75% ratio as far as who initiates the texts at that point, once they have initiated the first text with you. But a lot of times someone in your situation 
will know that I have said you need to be reserved and slow, but I didn't say cold. A lot of times people in your situation will be cold and even show anger that this person who's coming back to them actually broke up with them to begin with. And so there's this bitterness, this anger that they show, and that can be a huge turnoff because your ex will just think, well, if they're mad at me. I guess there's nothing I can do about it. I might as well just forget it. And they don't want to be around you because you're mad, you're irritated, you're bickering, you're trying to punish them. And that's a turnoff, especially if your ex had some concerns about that before. Maybe your anger was part of the reason they broke up with you. Either way, even if that's not the case, if you show anger, you almost always push them away and it fades out because it's almost like you're punishing them for coming back to you. And if you subscribe to my channel, which if you do, you will get informed when I have more videos like this, but you will know that if you punish someone for their actions, they will usually stop doing them. And that's how people end up lying to each other because this person will tell them the truth and the other person responds in anger and they punish them for telling the truth. And you just teach that person to lie to you. So that brings me to the fifth step of keeping your ex chasing you. And now they're not your ex anymore. If you two are working on being back together, you must show reserve. And I mentioned that just a little bit in the previous step, but stay with me on this. You must show reserve, but you must show your ex that you are interested, that you are considering this, that there is progress happening. And so if they say, do you want to get back together? You can say something like, well, I'm open to it, but I want to take it one day at a time. And whenever they talk to you about that, you give answers that show that you are interested and that things are moving forward, but they're moving slowly and that that's how you want it to be. And you certainly should not complain if your ex is not doing or saying the things you want them to do. For example, if they're not telling you, I love you constantly, they're not showing physical affection. They're not constantly reaching out to you. Don't complain about those things. You do not want to mope or complain. That's very similar to showing anger. Like I talked about in the previous step, it's not attractive and it will push them away. And you don't want to look like you're pushing them or you're impatient. You want to look like if anything, they're the ones pushing. You want to, you want to generate a little bit of impatience within them. So learn from those five steps and psychology will be on your side and your ex will likely chase. In the end screen here, as promised, is my video stages your ex goes through during no contact. And I encourage you to take a look at that.